Hello everybody and welcome to episode 18 of Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. In the last episode we automated that forestry machine in the back, or forestry machines I should say, and in between episodes I did a little bit of work. I automated some other alloys. I have Invar here automated, Electrum, Constantin, and I have two spots open here still. This, this is where the bronze was, which we did last episode. And over here I did some of the Ender IO alloys. We have a Vibrant Alloy, Energetic Alloy, uh, redstone alloy, which we're probably not never gonna use that much, but it's fine. And then we have dark steel, uh, pulsating iron, and electrical steel. Electrical steel is very useful for making conduit speed upgrades, and this one is for making conduits, and these two for conduits as well, because now we can basically, if we go over here and search for conduits, and I'm still remembering to not use my wireless crafting terminal like I will for a few episodes until I get used to it, but we can take all of our previous conduits that we had, for example, and that's just going to use up a bunch of uh, vibrant alloy, but we can transform one of each like that, and we have 2,000 ender energy conduits, and that is probably filling up our storage crates everywhere, but that is all good. Okay, uh, what I think I'll do today, because I want to clean some of this up, uh, I will take all of the uh, all of the crates, or one by one, I'll take the crates down over to our drawer controller over here. If we, we can sneak through this hole. There we go. And I'll add it over here. I'll put in some speed upgrades, and we'll see if the crates can empty into the drawer system. And then I can also probably disconnect or uh, remove the disks. What we could do, yeah, that could be cool. If we remove the disks from the storage and set up an importer on the... Uh, on the whatchamacallit, the crates, we can just import anything and everything that is in the crates into the storage system, basically. And I kind of, maybe we want to switch off of this, so so I have patterns for storage components, so we can make a bunch of 64Ks and we can set up like a, a bu bunch load of drives. There should be five drives here we can put, possibly more if we do a st stacks of eight or so, or maybe we can just put drives on all four sides and just have storage cells instead of the crates and that will be better. But yeah, let me get some work done on that. I'll uh, see about uh, doing the crates and all that, like I said, and I'll be back in a moment. Everything is moved over to these storage disks and I'm not a fan of the lighting issues that happen here. I don't know why they do. I mean, it's facades probably down here that are causing it. And I will see if these drive fixtures, fix fixtures, that's the word, uh, work better because these only hold six cells though. So we might put them over here on this side and have an entire wall of them or maybe possibly on here. Um, I think we can put it on the side, on this side and possibly on the other side as well. But the, the problem I ran into is with ME drives, I need iron casings. So I need 10 electron tubes. So I need a thermionic fabricator automating those. And I could do just a temporary setup right now and also for the hardened casings, but I'd rather just set up something permanent over here where we have our forestry automation. And I totally forgot we have uh, three wides on the other side as well. So I could have done the whole alloy thing that I did over here. I could have put the other alloy bits over here on this side. This still can move because I can just move everything with cardboard boxes, but I'll, I can do that in between episodes. But over here, I'll set up a few more carpenters and thermionic fabricators automating the things that I need. So it's going to be basically pretty much the same deal as it is here. Left side or inside is going to be input and then it's going to be output and then the carpenter in the middle or the thermionic fabricator. So let me get that going and I will show it to you once I have that completed. Before we continue with the forestry automation, I'm going to show you how I do the whole plates and gears thing. Basically, I have uh, connectors and there's these are facades and you can see that there's advanced yellow connector uh, on the backs of all of these metal presses, basically. So they insert directly into the metal press. So I don't put items in the world because the metal press only accepts one item as they go. So it can't overflow, basically, uh, which is really nice. But what I'm doing here I have three exporters, which should cover all of these drawers with the amount of uh, items we need to export it, because it's nine per export bus. Uh, I could be using interfaces, but then it's di more difficult to uh, get connectors on, and this way it just looks simp just looks better, I think. Uh, so over here, I have a sensor that is detecting 512 of all of the plates, and then I have an extract on the correct correct color, extracting the correct ingot, and an insert on the metal press, basically inserting the ingot and that is super simple uh, on how it works and I will show it to you how I do it with the plates but let, let, if I take a stack 
We should see 10 being exported as soon as that detects it, hopefully. Hello? Why is you no work? You should be... When it's less or equal, 512. On the plates drawer, you have power. This should be making iron plates, but it isn't. It was working before. Hmm. Hold on. Uh, so I forgot to do this. Enable processing on this channel. And we will now start processing. <laughs> okay, so it is making iron plates because we are out of them, or out of 512 of them at least. So it's gonna just so slowly make the plates. And I figured out uh, because we can just export directly into the metal press, we don't need to ha bother with having this on count or whatever. I just have it on the lowest number of ticks for each operation and on a single item and it's really nice. Uh, I think I'll change it over here for the gears to be different. We're gonna basically say on the, this is the metal press and this is the plates. So we're gonna create a logic and we're gonna say for items under or equal and we're gonna say iron gear, gold gear, copper gear and tin gear and then we need white. I just do colors by the color of the gear just so I remember. And then we can do, let's say, blue for this one. And then we need an extract from the drawer at the metal press. So that's this one. We need an item extract. Uh, and I can just disable processing on this channel for the moment and say extract. We're going to say count for every five ticks. And we're going to extract, no, iron, first of all. And we're going to say enable on color white. And we're going to put an insert here. And that should be good. You should start making iron gears. No? Hmm. So extract, count for. On the white sensor. Oh, yeah. Um, now we should hear it working fully. No? Do I need to set it to just extract one? No, we might need to, because you can extract four at a time, so it shouldn't be working. The sensor is active. This is active. We have an extract. We're going to say count four, or we can do a stack, but count four should be good. Yeah, we can't change that here. We have iron, gold, coppers, and all of those to extract from here. We need to insert to here. I don't, it could be that it's not working because of, uh, because of this guy not accepting, because you know what I can try? Hold on. If we grab four items of this, one, two, three, four, or even five, I can't just click on these, click these on. So for this one, I think I'll need to do the whole thing in the back where we have another layer of uh, conveyor belts because I need to drop these. Uh, if I do a total of four, or maybe I don't have the gear press on, that might also work. Hold on, can I grab this gear press? And why can I not? Okay, we do we have plates here? We do. Give me another gear mold. Another two. Yep. Maybe that would help. Okay. <laughs> We figure out the problems as we go. Okay, so that works. And then we can do the same thing. I'll just show it, you, show it to you again. We have the color yellow. So we do an extract uh, item, create. I'm going to say extract, single, every five ticks, gold, and insert. And that needs to be on the yellow color. So we should see just the iron finishing because it can't extract gold because it's extracting iron. So once iron finishes, uh, we're gonna do that. Also, we don't need 512 of each of the gears, I don't think. Uh, or do we? Because that's like 4,000, is that 4,000 iron? 2,000 iron. Uh, let's do 256 gears. Okay, that should be plenty. 
So 256. Okay, uh, so let me configure the rest of these that I have currently set up, uh, except for possibly these. I don't know. We have a, do we have Electrum? We don't have a Signalum yet, but ones that we have uh, ingots made, being made for, I will set them up and I will be back uh, to get to go set up all of the forestry machines. All of the gears are now processing and I want to mention that this sound dampener is the most amazing thing from Random Things because it can mute specific sounds without muting uh, just everything around it, basically. And I'm going to show you by making another one. <clears throat> sound dampener, we need this. Just a portable sound dampener. Oh yeah, we can put up... Uh, we could possibly just have this guy or the portable one on me all the time and then we when we come close it does it just mutes the metal presses basically uh but it's okay if if we have one over here but what i want to go is over here and we can probably just take these out you'll see that's the noise they make and we can uh grab this sound recorder and not pick up the lead gears because i went too low or the constantin gears there we go so we can take this sound recorder and click on uh, or sneak right click and you can see it turns red, it's recording and then we can sneak again and then you can see what everything is recorded. So we can then take this and we can go uh, metal press piston and then we need another one of these. And we need to go metal press mash. And then we toss in a mash and a piston and it mutes both. And then we can go over here as well and toss in a press and a piston. And the uh, these machines, I couldn't dampen with that noise or with the, the sound dampener, the noise they make. So you just need to turn those off in the configs. But we have all of the gears now being made and all of the plates here are already automated. At least, well, I didn't do these ones, so I can possibly just do these ones real fast. Uh, one thing that I want to mention, once you set up one, it's super easy to go set up the next one because all you do is take this and you copy this channel to the clipboard and then you come over here, you find the drawer you need to sensor on and then just paste. Uh, yeah, we don't need the metal press, we need over here. So then you can just take, just what I do is I take the plates, just one of each type that I need to automate here and then I go and grab the ingots for the corresponding ones. For example, we need steel, we need invar, constantin and bronze, bronze and constantin. Okay, so then we can just do the same thing. We also can come over here, copy this, and then I just paste it four times. And we can uh, just remove these and we can set up sensors for the invar, the steel, the constantin, the bronze. I actually wanna have the bronze, the constantin, the steel, and the invar. And then I put invar on white. This one is on gray. This one was yellow and orange. And then we can say extract on orange, bronze extract on yellow, constantin, extract on white, invar, and then extract on gray, steel. That should be all. Do we have the plate press? First of all, I'll check that we do. Okay. Oh yeah, we, we have only bronze and steel and we need Constantin and Invar. So we need to add those two to here. I don't even have them. I don't even have these two on the extract apparently. Cause those are, yeah, the top four. So we need two capacity cards and two, not crafting cards, acceleration cards. And then we do bronze, steel, Constantin, Invar. That should get exported. I'll just enable round robin and Sensor, we just need to enable processing. And I could be setting all of these to round robin, but it's fine. It's just gonna process one and then the next and then so forth. Uh, so yeah, now it's gonna process the invar and the next some other plate. And that is all good and dandy. I'm gonna toss in the steel as well. I mean, I could be tossing it directly into the system because it would go to the drawer anyway, but that's fine. Okay, back to forestry automation. 
I have two of the three things that I want to automate right now, automated basically. I have the uh, hardened casings over here. We have diamonds and sturdy casings, which is why requ we required, uh, if we look at the uses on sturdy casing, I want, what I want to explain, we required copper gears and bronze gears for that. That's why I did the whole thing with the gears downstairs in the last clip. And over here we have the tin electron tubes in the thermionic fabricator. Pretty much the same thing, exporter, level emitter and storage bus and we can just say priority 10 and whoops uh bi-directional please okay uh so i'll automate this one as well and we'll do that together everything is locked so we can grab a capacity card and this card and my phone is doing something and we need iron and redstone and we can put the iron on top of there redstone in here and then we need also glass so i'll just snag one from here and put in glass we can also say round robin, and then we need to go into the back here. Uh, and before I set the extracts, cause it's gonna start extracting everywhere. So let's just do that. I'm gonna say extract always active. Whoops, come on, can you let me click on that please? Thank you, insert extract on red, insert on red. And we just need to let's grab an iron. So we'll grab a redstone so it doesn't put in, oh, it didn't put in two iron, okay because it ran out of iron there because it's exporting slowly. And it should finish, it should put in the glass as well as soon as it finishes with all of those. And we can just say emit when levels are below limit. And we can do that and that and put in the iron. And as soon as this heats up, it's gonna start producing iron electron tubes and then we can toss them in the level emitter. So that should only take uno momento. There we go, iron electron tubes. We're gonna put you in here and say 128, emit when levels are above or equal to limit. And we're gonna put priority 10 and partition. Awesome. So that's easy automation right there for the thermionic fabricators. Then we can grab some facades if we have enough. Can we craft like 40 more? I think we have the, the bits in the system. So we can just do like that. Just cover up the things that need to be covered, like so, and like so. And there's gonna be plenty of other recipes that we need for the thermionic fabricators, and we can put them in here, or I will see how the modular machinery works, if you can have like one modular thermionic fabricator for everything, but I'm not sure. If that is the case, we'll just tear this down and automate just that one, but we might just leave it as is. It, I think it's all good. Okay, also I forgot to quantify this so we can see the amount of electron tubes. Why are you not doing more? Disabled by redstone. What? Emit when levels are above or equal to limit. Um. Electron tubes. Tin electron tubes. There it goes. And what else do I have of the tubes? I have the golden ones, which I needed for something. What did I need golden ones for? I was crafting the atomic reconstructor. Yeah, but we are not going to need more than one of those. So it's all good. Awesome. That is really neat. So that, that was the problem. Like, why was it stopped before 128? And that, that is how it works. Are you still? Oh yeah. Um, maybe if I set this guy up to be bi-directional, then this will see that it is, that it should stop. Okay, fine. Well, we're gonna use some tubes, it's okay. Sweet. So the tubes I needed for automating iron casings, iron casings, oops, iron casing. I had it on the M drive, but the iron casing, we can now get a recipe for and go over here. I'll just toss it over here and we can now get a recipe for the ME drive. Oh, do we need to? I don't think we need to. I'm just gonna request uh, a bunch of iron casings. Why can I not see the recipe? Uh, because it's not showing me stored and craftables. 
Okay, make me like 60 iron casings, please. Thank you very much. And then Emmy drives. Uh, let's create three for the moment because we have three over there and then we just need some iron. It's going to make us the drive fixtures. So we can grab the smart cables and I can dye these as well if we wanted to have a different color. We can just grab that and then we're going to need just two more. And let's go up top because we have these of the empty variety and we can just start tossing these in. Let's grab the rest of these. Let me just clean up my inventory. I don't think we're going to be automating much else right now. So we can just transport all of these disks over. Let's just get the empty ones out of the way. You have one item, you have 60 items. Empty, empty, empty. And we can grab the drive and the drive and some iron ingots, which we have over here, and turn these into fixtures. Fixtures. And we're just gonna, I'm just gonna break this. And we can toss all of these that are full in here. Full, 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 and full, and one. Okay. Then we can just grab a smart cable in the back here and hook this up. And what I'll do as well is we'll take these cables off and put down some smart cables. Put the facades back. Nice. Why are you transparent? Interesting. It has like a little dot when it's not full and a little line when it is full. And it has a weird thing with the whole transparency. It's even weirder than the drive. I don't know. It's fine. Okay. Let me facade those with something and we can continue on or we'll see how much time I have left. I decided since we're getting liquid meat from this mob farm because I have this just running and also the mob crusher. So every so often this guy gets a kill and every so often that guy gets or this guy cleans up most of the stuff because this uh, mob slaughter factory doesn't keep up with the entire entirety of the uh, of the place here with the amount of mobs that we're making the the mobs mob crusher kills all of them at a time and the mob slaughter factory just like works one at a time basically so i can use the meat feeder which i can put into my baubles in my head slot it said over there apparently and i can put the gluttony charm in the belt slot that's fine uh so this basically will just feed me automatically uh meat and it will not lower my saturation so it will not lower my nutrition down as you can see, my saturation currently is full, and that is really cool. And I don't really have to use the lighted meals. I can all I can just take a stack of the lighted meals. We're gonna craft another two, just because. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. Uh, just to have, if I run out of meat, I have the the ability to get food. So that should last me quite a bit. And the meat is really neat, basically. Meat is neat. That is also a rhyme. Uh, I want to add one more thing over here. I have a pink slime in a spawner changer that I got off camera. And I have some spawners over here. It doesn't really matter which one we, we take out. Uh, it's the cave spider. We're going to change it to pink slime. And then I need a drop of evil. Before hopefully pink slime starts spawning. Okay. And I'll take some speed upgrades. I don't think I showed this, but I made speed upgrades off camera. Like, I don't know, a couple episodes ago. Because this enchanter is super easy to use. It's easily automatable. I have speed upgrades in it. You just need six magical wood or a full enchanting table set. Basically, like, uh, 15 bookshelves is what I mean. And the recipes for this, for magical wood, is just lapis and uh, bookshelves. And you can do that in... Uh, you can get magical wood with a crafting table with bookshelves and gold. And then you can get blocks of enchanted metal with blocks of gold and lapis lazuli or just get the, the ingots directly. We can't get to the last tier of speed upgrades which stack to 64 because we don't have nether stars yet. But the magical apples again are just apples and lapis lazuli and I can make apples with uh, the nature essence that I have. So over by the mob farm we're gonna now add this into the thing. I don't think anything should really shoot me that much if I just open this up a little bit. 
Oh, I have to go inside to do the thing. Yep. Okay. So let's just boop, 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 boop. Uh, turn this off and turn the lights on. Wait for everything to die so we don't get queued. And we can then sneak right click this in and give it some speed upgrades. And then put the dark glass back. And this should be on. As soon as we turn this guy off, we should see pink slime spawning. Possibly. No. Oh, this needs to be set to redstone on. But it's still not spawning pink slime. Which might be a problemo. I don't know why that's not working. But if I turn... This guy should be on. If I turn it... Yeah. If I turn everything else on, that should be fine. This should be connected. But the pink slime aren't doing it their thing. Uh, I'm going to have to probably Google that and see why they're not spawning. Hold on. So the Resurp spawner with the pink slime just doesn't work. I tried even putting it in a slime chunk, which is over here with darkness and everything, and it just didn't work. It, if you know anything about how this would work, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm glad to hear your suggestions and follow them because you guys are sometimes smarter than I am. And yeah, well, a lot of the times you give me very, very good tips. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so let me find out what else I can do in the next couple of minutes, and we will probably be finished with the episode when we do that, basically. I decided to just finish off some quests. We completed the entire thing for immersive engineering, so I can just claim the loot chests for all of these, and we will open them together, and that shouldn't take too long. So let me just quickly claim the rest of these. Did I not claim this one? Apparently not. Okay. HV energy and MV energy. Awesome. And let's see what we get. We get a rail gun, a Tesla coil, BLTs, range collectors, my dad is coming home, a church quartz fixture, thankful dinners, and that's pretty much it. Okay. So I think this is going to be it for today. So I want to thank you all for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Also consider subscribing to see new videos. Support me on Patreon if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.